When the new Arrow Lake lineup of CPUs launched, one of the big talking points was down to memory speeds, something that Intel has always been strong on, especially compared to the competition from AMD. Now, unlike AMD, Intel relies on not only low latency, but raw unadulterated speed. And with the price of memory increasing quite rapidly as you move up in frequency, we wanted to put it to the test to see if faster memory really makes that much of a difference on the new Core Ultra U9285K processor. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Oh, I'm never gonna be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So I don't wanna delve into the CPU as a whole because well, we already have launch day content on that, going through the specs, the architecture, and the overall performance for you, the consumer. And to summarize things up, while power and efficiency is much better than the predecessor in the way of the 14th gen series, performance didn't give us anything groundbreaking to, I guess, fend off the competition from AMD or give us that generational uplift that we were all hoping for from Raptor Lake Refresh. Now, what we did have for launch day though was new support for, well, faster memory. While the 14th generation in places, partly down to the silicon lottery, gave us better memory speed support, Arrow Lake improved on that further and saw us testing with 8200 megahertz CU dims. But being a new type of technology and at a much faster speed than what the typical user could get on Raptor Lake, we wanted to see how much of a difference that made in terms of gaming, if any, especially due to well, the extra price premium that it demands. You have to remember, this is new technology, so there's higher prices if you wanna be that early adopter. Now, typically speaking, CU dims being a new type of memory that incorporates a clock driver directly onto the dim itself. Well, it's a new technology, it's a new standard, and therefore you are gonna to have to pay that early adopter tax. But in turn, it does give you a couple of things. It gives you higher stability and reliability at higher frequencies, which in conjunction with the new CPU lineup gives us the ability to push things further than we've ever seen before. Especially when you compare this to AMD, where there's the sweet spot of 6,000 megahertz. Well, Intel seem to, I guess, have it wrapped up in terms of getting that blistering fast speed and potentially boosting your processor. Now, sadly, the big downside is the cost implication. And while you can readily buy 8,200 megahertz memory, having that integrated clock driver does ramp the price up somewhat. But again, being a new technology means that availability is still, well, pretty scarce. So for the purposes of this content, we'll have to speculate to some degree. And with the Kingston Fury Renegade 48 gig, 8,200 mega transfer CU DIM kit that we have here, we'd hazard a guess on pricing around the $270 mark. And well, this will help us analyze the performance based on cost. Though if the memory does come in more expensive, then at least you know that the cost per frame that we'll be looking at may actually be a little bit worse. So I guess consider our testing and our results here as let's say best case scenario. Now, talking of testing, let's get into the real reason that you're actually here to see those glorious benchmark numbers. To test, we use the Intel Core Ultra U9285K on an MSI MEG Z890 ACE motherboard with 48 gig of Kingston Fury Renegade 8200 MHz CL40 CU DIM memory. To alleviate any bottlenecks, we use the NO3D RTX 4090 iChill X3OC and Windows 11 23H2 was used with the latest chipset and graphics drivers, as Arrow Lake still has some major issues with the latest 24H2 update. We've tested a total of 10 games to show what performance we were able to get with the memory at its rated 8200 MHz speed before downclocking the memory to 7600 MHz, 7200 MHz, and even going as low as 6800 MHz. We'll also be looking at the cost per frame based on the price of memory kits at each rated speeds to get a better all round picture as to, well, if paying for higher speed memory makes a noticeable difference based on the value for money aspect when it comes to these new processors. So with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Starting things off with a Plague Tale Requiem where we can see that decreasing the memory speed to 7600 MHz actually increases the frame rate. 
but given that it's only a single FPS, this likely is just margin of error. And it's safe to say that it actually didn't make any difference in performance at all. Bringing the speed down more, however, does cause us to see a steady decline in performance, with 7200 megahertz giving us 2% lower performance, though this is still, again, a margin of error difference. While 6800 megahertz also sees a decline with 3% lower performance, so I think it's safe to say that speed does make a difference here, even if it's not noticeable, and is quite a small difference regardless. Moving over to Assetto Corsa, we actually see quite a large drop in performance, with an 8% decrease in frames when we bring the memory speed down from 8200MHz to 7600MHz. Then decreasing the speed further to 7200MHz increases that gap further by just under 10%. What's interesting though is that these lower speeds actually decrease performance enough to make the U9285K's performance worse than that of the 13600K and the 9700X, so not great for Intel's latest flagship. And sadly it gets worse as when we look at 6800MHz memory speeds we see the biggest drop yet, with 20% lower performance than our baseline test of 8200MHz. When we look at Baldur's Gate 3, we see the U9 with 7600 MHz memory decrease in performance from our baseline test by just under 5%. So whether this is margin of error or not is up for debate, but a 9 FPS decrease is pretty substantial overall. 7200 MHz sees the performance drop further, this time by 14%, which brings performance 1 FPS below the U5245K, which is a pretty big drop but we actually see performance drop even lower when we change the memory speed down to 6800 MHz, which in turn decreases the performance by 19% from the 8200 MHz speed, which now sees the 13600K outperforming the U9, albeit by just 1%. Cyberpunk 2077 is up next and here we see that performance changes very little between the different memory speeds, with 7600MHz and 7200MHz both only seeing a single frame difference from our base test of 8200MHz. Changing our speed to 6800MHz does however see a much bigger drop in performance, with an 8fps decrease that equates to a 9% drop in performance, making this, well, the worst result. But that's kind of expected, and Cyberpunk still clearly has some issues with the new Arrow Lake lineup anyway, so there's not much to take away from these tests. Moving on to F123, where we found the memory speed actually making quite a big difference to performance, with 7600 MHz falling behind the baseline test of 8200 MHz by just under 15%. And whilst this isn't exactly the biggest drop percentage, it does actually work out to around 58 frames per second, which is pretty substantial overall. 7200 MHz was very much the same story as it was only 1 FPS behind our 7600 MHz result, so not much between it, but where we see another big drop is at 6800 MHz, where the U9 now performs 20% worse than it did with the faster memory speed of 8200 MHz, and this puts it towards the bottom of our standings. Next up is Hogwarts Legacy, and here we saw very little change for the most part, with 7200MHz memory coming in with the exact same average FPS as the 8200MHz test, while 7600MHz saw 2 FPS higher performance, but this is margin of error, so let's for the sake of being fair call it identical. More interestingly, we see 6800MHz drop in performance by 7% compared to the 8200MHz speeds, which now means that the U5 actually manages to see itself coming in 2% better performing than the flagship U9. Spider-Man is our next game, and the U9 was actually our best performer here, with 8200MHz memory at 216 frames per second. When we drop the speed down to 7600MHz, it remains at the top, with only 2% less performance than the baseline 8200MHz test. Setting the memory speed slower though, now down to 7200 MHz, does see us drop in performance some more, with a decrease of 5% compared to the baseline. We then see a further drop that sees a 9% difference to our baseline test when we lower the memory speed again to 6800 MHz, which places the U9 right between the 13700K and 14700K. When we move over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see some pretty steady decreases in performance as we drop the memory speed. Moving down from 8200 MHz to 7600 MHz has our performance drop, but only by 1%, which falls into margin of error. Then the difference with 7200 MHz is a little bigger, at just under 4% compared to the baseline, but again, still isn't too much to worry about. Things do see a bit more of a change when we drop down to 6800 MHz, however, which sees our performance drop by 8% compared to the 8200 MHz speeds. And with this being a frame rate drop of 21 FPS, you can now see how this would make a bit more of a noticeable difference on a lower end GPU. Our penultimate game is Starfield, which sees the 8200 MHz baseline test at the top of our chart at 164 frames per second. Just below that is where we find our 7600MHz result with a 2FPS decrease, which is only enough to see a 1% difference, so again, let's call it identical. 
7200 megahertz does see the gap increase to 8.5% however, while 6800 megahertz sees an even bigger jump to 11.5% compared to our baseline. Whilst none of these performance drops affect the playability of the game, it certainly doesn't look good when we compare how other CPUs actually performed. This slower memory is actually enough to make the U9 perform worse than the 14700K and 13700K, and it only just performs slightly better than the U5245K. Finally, we move on to Rift Breaker, and here we see the worst result possible. The U9 was already the lowest performing CPU in this title and showed that some optimizations were very much needed, but we wanted to see what effect, if any, memory speed actually had. By decreasing the memory speed, we were able to see the results drop in line with each decreasing memory speed, making the U9 perform, well, worse and worse. On a positive note though, we at least didn't see the performance dropping too much between each speed decrease, with 7600MHz only falling 3% lower than our 8200MHz baseline test, while 7200MHz falls a little further with 4% worse performance. And then 6800MHz sees the largest drop with 10% lower performance than 8200MHz. In all honesty, I think this title has more to worry about than how memory affects it. However, as all of these tests are at the bottom of our chart, it isn't exactly a good look for a brand new high-end flagship CPU. So a lot of data to go through, and I think it's somewhat conclusive in terms of the performance that you actually get based on the speed of memory. There was definitely a noticeable difference with the lower memory speeds, especially when comparing the likes of 8200 megahertz to 6800 megahertz. While 7200 megahertz and 7600 megahertz and it sits somewhere in between, as expected, but doesn't, at least in some games, see much, if any, in terms of a noticeable difference when we're talking about performance. Now, the best way to look at the big picture is, of course, to check out the overall averages and cost per frame, and it's here where the faster 8200MHz memory holds a clear lead over the other speeds. In comparison to the 7600MHz memory speed, we see a 5% uplift in performance moving up to 8200MHz while the move from 7200MHz sees a slightly better 9% increase in performance. And then, our slowest, 6800MHz memory has the 8200MHz memory coming in 15% faster, which is actually quite impressive when looking at it from face value. But, as we know, it's all about the cost. And well, sadly, in that scenario, an 8200MHz kit comes in 45% more expensive than a 6800MHz kit. And, well, that's reflected in the cost per frame. What we find is that the faster speed comes in the most expensive at $1.42 per frame, while the cheapest is the 7200MHz speed at $1.6 per frame, which is 25% well, cheaper per frame for 8% less performance. So you as a consumer can decide if you want to pay over the odds for that amount of extra performance. Me personally, I'd be plumping for 7200MHz memory over 6800MHz in a heartbeat, as they actually come in with the same price. But the faster of the two does give an uplift in performance, while beyond that, it becomes the land of diminishing returns when looking at the overall cost. Now, unless faster memory comes down in price, of which it will, it's still too early to do anything now. But remember that as faster memory comes down in price, so will the slower stuff too. Now, don't get me wrong, 7200 megahertz isn't slow by any stretch of the imagination, but as overclockers are now pushing DDR5 to 12,196 mega transfers a second, I guess it shows the headroom that's available when it comes to tinkering and pushing your hardware through overclocking. Overall, while yes, there are certainly decreases from having lower memory speeds, I think for the most part, it isn't substantial enough to worry too much about spending the extra money on faster memory, as performance never fell to well, anything remotely considered as unplayable levels. Now, considering that Arrow Lake has let's say some other issues with the likes of performance optimizations in games like we saw in Cyberpunk, and then the issues with Windows 11 24 H2, we will likely see performance increase as time goes on. But for now, I'd say going for blistering fast memory and well, paying over the odds for it right now is honestly the least of your worries. So yeah, that's I guess gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. Also, if you love what we do, then consider joining the super special Patreon family. You'll not only be supporting everything that we do here at eTechnics, but you'll also get access to a whole host of cool extras, including exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, meetings at the uh, eTechnics offices, of which we do have new ones, and we are doing behind the scenes content for that over on Patreon as well, and much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.